Here we're going to take a look at how to integrate the Curity Identity Server with Open Policy Agent. We'll start by cloning the GitHub repository for the demo environment. Once that's downloaded here, we can go into the directory and we'll do a Docker Compose build to build the images that make up this demo environment. And now to run this, we'll do a docker compose up to start all of the containers. When the environment is up and running, we can switch to a browser, go to the admin UI. We have to approve the self-signed certificate warning. The admin password is defined in the docker compose file. So if we locate that in the repository here, it's an environment variable for the security container. We can copy that, paste it. We need to run through the basic setup to get the system initialized. I'm going to upload a license file here. There's some detailed um, articles and recordings on this specific step as well available. So I'm going to run through this fairly quick here. We'll use the defaults for all of the things. We want SSL enabled, so I'm going to choose the default admin SSL key here. And we'll commit the changes. Now we want to also merge in a configuration for this demo environment. So that's actually in the repository as well. We go into the security folder here and we have a config file. We need to make sure to merge this into the current configuration of the system, upload, and then obviously we need to commit these changes as well. Let's take a quick check under profiles, token service, clients. We can see we have two clients here, www and a gateway client. We will use the www client to obtain an opaque token and the gateway client will be used by Kong for introspection to get a jot. If we now switch to OAuth tools to test this out, we can use that client. We'll request the OpenID and records scope here and simply click run. We'll trigger authentication. We don't have any accounts in this environment, so I need to create one. And we'll look at the policy later, but if we create users with the username Alice or Bob, for example, they will match the default data that our API is exposing. So I'm gonna use Alice here. And now we can return to login and login with Alice. This now issues an access token for us that we can use to access the API. So this is the endpoint of Kong that's exposing the API. I'm going to try to get record zero using the access token that we just had. You can see down here that it's adding the token in the authorization header. And that's a success. We can see the record here. The patient is Alice. If we try record one, access is forbidden. The reason for this, we're going to look at the policy later, is that users can only access their own records. And if we look at record zero, the patient is Alice. So that was successful. ID one, the patient is bombed. That's why access is denied. So two should also work. Two also um, belongs to Alice. So we try two here. That also allows us to retrieve the, the records payload. Now let's look at the policy that is enforcing this access. This is the 
policy that's held by OPA. The default for allow is false, and then we have a set of rules inside of allow that all needs to be true in order for allow to return true. We have a definition of allowed issuers, and we are checking the allowed issuers against the issuer in the payload of the token. We're also checking the that the input method is get and the path. We're also checking the, that the audience matches our dub 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 client here, as well as the scopes. All pretty straightforward. Uh, now the is owner is a little bit more of a complex uh, rule here, uh, where we are first picking out the record ID, which is done by trimming left of the input path because the path ends with the record ID. And then we use the record ID and pass it to the record owner method here, which is defined here starting on 44. And in that, we can see that we're actually making a call to the API directly to get the API payload. So OPA is calling the API directly and gets the body of the entire record. But in the isOwner method up here, um, we are picking out the patient. So now we have the patient of the record in question. And then we're comparing that to the subject in the token payload or in the JOT. And both sides are normalized to lowercase. So that's how we compare that the user, the subject, is the owner. And if all of these are true, allow will return true to Kong. That allows the um, invocation or the execution of the upstream API and give us the actual data back. Now we can also um, look at the data further the records here we can actually add to this because it's loading the, the API data on the fly so if we add a record here record six for example and make it assigned to Alice as the patient I can now call record six and that will also work we'll get the payload back so the API itself is dynamic in how it's loading the underlying data so for testing purposes fairly convenient you can add and change to the records themselves so that's a demo for how we can perform fine grain authorization using um, the phantom token approach in combination with open policy agent uh, the security identity server and in this case the kong api gateway that sits as the enforcement point to control access to the api